everyone, my name is Marisa and I'm going to show you how to make my A New Creation bracelet today. It is a very, very exquisite looking bracelet and um, I think you'll like it. It's got three passes to it, but they're very easy. So go ahead and get your things together and I'll show you what to do first. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a comfortable length of thread to two size 10 needles but have size 12 needles handy also because once we start working with our 15 our 15 O's we might have to switch so I have about I think I have about four feet of thread and you will have to keep adding thread for this project so as I said it has um, there are several passes through this lovely bracelet here but it is worth it. it. It is worth it. Sorry about that. Okay. So I'm not going to add my clasp just yet. Go ahead and make little piles of your round O's, your six millimeter beads, 11 O's, 15 O's, rondelles, your halo beads, and your pinch beads. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in through a round duo just like this. No crossing. I'm going to hold on to my round duo as I hold on to both of my needles and pull just to ensure that, ha that I have equal amounts of thread on both my needles. So once I come out of my little round duo easy step now our first pass is going to be 11 on each needle well, our sequence is going to be 11 pinch bead 11 so I'm going to go ahead and do that on both needles I have 11 pinch bead 11 on both needles, letting them drop, and then I'm going to pick up my halo bead, well, and then I'm going to put my little 6 millimeter bead on like that, and then I'm just going to go through the other hole like that. See? And then we're going to take our other needle and just cross it through the halo the six millimeter bead and the halo it's still the early it's still pretty early in my project so I'm going to hold on to everything again when I pull just to make sure that everything is centered so this is what we should have now we're going to mirror what we did on this side to the other side so on goes 11 0 on each needle pinch bead on each needle and 11 0 on each needle 11 0 pinch bead 11 0 letting them drop I'm going to pick up my next round duo and I'm going to just go in like whoop, like that and then I'm going to pull both my needles See, this is what we have. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and do my 15 0 my rondelle, and again, these are the one and a half by two millimeter rondelles. So it's 15 0 rondelle 15 0 and then I'm going to, I'm coming out of my round duo like that, I'm going to circle around and go in through that same hole again. And that is going to decorate my round duo on the outside. And then just give a tight pull because you don't want any thread showing. On the other side, I'm going to do the same. 15 0 
Rondell 15-0, letting them drop. Coming out of my round duel here, going to circle around and go in through that same hole again and pull. And this is what I have. So now from here, we're going to do our little unit again. So pick up on, e on each needle an 11-0, a pinch bead, an 11-0, and I'm going to do that on both sides. 11-0, so 11-0, pinch bead, 11-0, letting them drop, picking up my next halo bead, picking up my six millimeter bead, And I can't see this hole, and I'm going to just get it in there and then cross with my other needle through all of this, and I'm going to pull. And this is what I have. Once I am coming out, again, it's going to be 11 0, pinch bead. 11-0, and if you come across a pinch bead that's kind of stubby looking, don't use it. Put it aside and grab a pretty one. Okay, so on both of my needles, again, it's 11-0, pinch bead 11-0. Going to pick up another round duo, and both of my needles are going to go in like that, no crossing, and pull. Coming out of my round duos again, and I'm going to decorate the sides of my round duo with 15-0, rondel, 15-0, circling around, going through that same hole that I'm coming out of. Doing that on the other side, 15-0, rondel, 15-0. Circling around, and if there's a little bit of thread, pull your knee, your your string, and then pull here. So this is what we have: our first pass of our bracelet. Pretty simple. Go ahead and do the amount of units that you need. For my size wrist, I did seven. So a size seven. I mean, so seven of these little units will yield you a, and then of course it also depends on the type of clasp you want to use, clasp, excuse me, that you want to use. It's a little bit under seven inches. It's about six and a half inches. So seven units for a little bit less than a six and a half inch bracelet, but again, my, my clasp takes about, about a half an inch maybe three quarters of an inch. So, and again, um, if you want to do eight units or nine units, and then if it's a little too short, you can always add a couple of, a few jump rings at the end. So go ahead and do the length that you need and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I already finished adding, making all my little units. And on my last round duo, I'm gonna, end it, I'm going to do the same thing like I did to all these other round duos by decorating the sides of it with the 15, the rondel, and the other 15-0. 15-0, yeah. Um, I know I didn't do that on the first one, but that's no problem. We'll do it when we come back. So now we're coming out of our round duo. Here, now I'm going to add, I'm going to use a lobster clasp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up two 15 O's, my lobster. I'm sorry, two 11 O's, my lobster, and then I'm going to pick up two 11 O's on the other side of my lobster, and I'm going to go down my round duo, the other hole, I'm going to pull. Now, with this needle, I'm going to go through everything that I just added, which is the two 11 O's on this side of my clasp, my lobster clasp, 
the two 11 nos on the other side down my round duo. And I'm going to give this a pull. So I have two strings going through everything. Now if you want, with one needle, or both, you can go through everything one more time. But I'm coming out of my round duo. So from here, I am going to go through those two, and I should have caught them when I was doing that, but that's okay. I'm going to go through those two little 11 O's that are after my round duo. So both my needles, this one on this side, the left one on the left side. Now here, and um, your little halo bead with the six millimeter bead is going to be flipping around on you. And um, that's normal, that's okay. So I'm coming out of my two 11 O's that are inside here. I'm going to pick up a rondelle with one needle and I'm going to cross through it. So that's gonna stick my little rondelle up there, in there. So now from here, I'm going to pick up five 15 O's. And we're going to do this with both needles, but I'm going to show you one at a time. So I have five 15 O's. Then I'm going to go through this 11 O on the side here of this hole, on the side of the hole of my halo bead. I'm going to go through that first 11 O, and then I'm going to pick up another 11 O, and here I'm going to use a different color. You don't have to, but I'm going to do that, and I'm actually going to use Toho for this step. So I'm going to pick up a Toho 11 O, go through the 11 O after that. And then I'm going to pick up five more 15 O's. And I'm gonna let those drop. And I'm going to wait while I do that on this side. I already went through my rondelle. I'm going to pick up five 15 O's. I'm going to go through my 11 O on the side of the hole of my halo bead, that first one. Then I'm going to pick up another 11 O. Then I'm going to go through the 11 O on the other side there. Now I'm cut and I'm going to pick up five more 15 O's on my needle. One, two, three, four, five. And then from here, we're coming out of this little grouping here. On, that's three 11 O's that are on the side of the hole of the halo. And I have added five 15 O's to my needle needles. And I'm going to pick up another rondelle and I'm going to cross through it. Pull tight. And then I'm going to go through these 11 O's that are right before the round duo. And I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm going to go through that 11 O that's right before the round duel, going through the round duel and coming out of my 11 O on the other side of my round duel. And you pull tight. And it's going to look something like this. But of course, everything is still going to be flipping around. Well, this halo with the beads is going to be flipping around. But go ahead and finish this step and see it's gonna look something like that we're all done but go ahead and finish this step and remember to pull tight when you're coming out of the I didn't catch that other 11 oh when you're coming out of the 11 O's after your round duo and you're ready to add your crystal make sure you pull tight each time so I'm coming out of my 
11 ohms here and I'm ready to do the same thing again which is adding a, rond a little rondelle crossing through it and pulling tight and then I'm going to pick up on each needle 5 15 ohms go through this 11 ohm here pick up another 11 ohm and then go out of this 11 ohm picking up 5 15 ohms again doing the same on the other side with this needle and then once you do that you're going to pick up your rondelle cross through it and then go through this 11 ohm the, the round dual and the 11 on the other side. So if you have any questions, go ahead and rewind the video so you can see this step again. What I did was I added my, I just reinforced this, uh, the clasp here, the lobster claw. And then, uh, so it looks just like this side now over here and uh, so all I did was when I added these little the beads on top and I crossed through this crystal <clears throat> I went through the 11 O's here and then through the round duo and I came out and I just added my clasp and I also reinforced it I did the same thing like I did on the other side. I added two 11 O's, my lobster claw, and then two 11 O's, and then I cross, well, I didn't cross, I just went through all of this with my other needle, came down the round duo, and um, came down the two 11 O's after the round duo and I started doing this on the other side this is the top side this is oh wow okay and I started doing this on the other side see this little part here these little beads see how it is now with uh, your with your halo and your bees just like flipping around and twisting around this is going to help them to stay there on top like that without flipping around. So in order to do that, and as I said, after I did all this on the end, I came out of my round duo, came out of the 11 O's after the round duo, and that's where I'm at now. I, I did a few, of, well, I did five of them. So, but I'm in place to do the next one, to do my next round here. And between takes, I'm just going to have to pick up all the beads that I dropped. So I'm coming out of the 11 O's after my round duo. And on goes two 8 O's on one needle. And then cross through it with the other needle. And then just pull your threads. And see, it's going to look like that here. Now what we're going to do, and we're going to do this with on each side. You're going to go through your pinch bead. I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side too, just to have it ready. And see this part, it's easy. So it may not be the most funnest part to do, but it's very easy. Okay, and then add two more eight O's once you're coming out of the pinch bead. Go in through the other pinch bead. On the other side, I'm going to do the same. Pick up two eight O's. Go through that pinch bead. The next one. And then you see your little halo and your bead is just like flipping around all over the place. And then we're coming out of both of our pinch beads. We're going to pick up two more eight O's. And we're going to cross through those. Pull. And then we are going to reinforce this by my needle on this side. I'm going to, the needle that's coming out of those 8 O's, I'm going to go through the pinch beads on the other side. The 8 O's that we just added. 
and then the pinch bead, and then the eight O's. I only grabbed one, that's okay. Then the eight O's, the very first group beam of eight O's that we put. Do, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna go through my pinch bead. Whoops. Going through these eight O's. Going through the pinch bead and going through these eight O's here. So once again, we've crossed through the eight O's and I'm going to pull. Still looking kind of freakish, that's all right. Now here goes three 11 O's and I'm using two different colors for this part. You don't have to, but I am. Coming out of your 8 O's, like I said, go three 11 O's, go into your next 8 O's. Now these 11 O's, you want them inside of the piece. So you want them like, let's see if you can see, like that. <clears throat> you don't want them on the outside of the pinch bead, you want them on the inside. So let's do that again, three 11 O's, going through my next grouping there of 8 O's and pull, and you want those on the inside. I'm gonna do the same thing with this side. Three 11 O's. Go into your eight O's. And make sure they're in the inside of the pinch bead. Three 11 O's into your eight O's up here. and you want them inside of the pinch beads. Sometimes they'll just land there, other times you have to help them. So that's what we got. And then you wanna keep just turning to make sure these are the way they're supposed to be, like that, okay? So I'm gonna pull. And my bead here looks, my halo and my bead look good. And then from here, <clears throat> on this side, I'm gonna do this side first, go in through your middle 11 0. It's gonna come loose. If it does, just pull the other string to make it tight again. Pick up three 11 0s, and I'm using my toe hose now. I'm going to circle around and then go through the next 11 O, through my 8 O's and come out. So we added a little pico on top of the middle 11 O. And we're gonna do that again. We're gonna do that to all of our middle 11 O's that we've just added. So I'm picking up three 11 O's, circling around, going through that same 11 O bead, catching the 11 O bead after it, and I was able to catch my eight O's and I'm gonna pull if everything comes out if your 11 O's come out of that little spot just help them back in there I'm gonna do the same thing on this side I'm going to go through the come out of the middle bead add three 11 O's circle around go through that same middle bead go through the next one Catch, catching my eight O's. Then I'm going to go through the middle 11 O here on this grouping. Three more 11 O's. Circling around. Coming out. Try to come out of a, or as many beads as you can. I'll just catch it now. So both of my needles are coming out of my 8 O's there. Okay, so that's what you gotta do for this step. And I'll show you what to do. Go ahead and catch up and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so I'm coming out of my 8 O's here. I already did all of my picots that are on top of the middle 11 O from the three 11 O's that we've just added, the ones that go in between our 8 O's. 
And again, I'm going to flip my work over. My halo and my bead are still good. So I'm going to turn back over again. And, I, you know, I just want to keep checking it, making sure it's not crooked. Well, not crooked, but like going, like doing like how this one is right here. You, you don't want this one to be doing that. So I'm coming out of my 8 O's. I'm going to go through the bottom 11 O's. Then I'm going to work my way up to the middle 11 O of the Pico. Because we're going to be attaching all of these together or connecting them. So we're going to be going through our Pico beads, the, the middle one. So doing that on this side, going through those to out of the middle one. And then these three that we just added, I'm also going to be going coming out of the middle one. So now both of my threads are coming out of the middle bead from my picots. This thread is going to, this needle is going to go in through this middle bead. And then this needle, the one on my left hand, is going to be going through my, and I twisted something here. Just make sure they, things don't get all twisty. And then the one on my left hand is going to be going through the middle bead on my pico on my right side. And then once you do that, pull. And then we're going to go through with this needle, the one on my right hand, I'm going to go, I'm going to go up to this middle bead of this pico there. And then I'm going to come out, I'm going to go through the one beside it, the left one, and then come out through that one. The one on my left hand, same thing. I'm going to cop on up to the top pico going through the middle bead. And then I'm going to go through the one on this side. So we've connected all four of those middle 11 O's of our picots together. And this is what we have. Everything is connected. Now go through these. Now I'm coming out of, the, of these here on the top. Go through the bottom ones again. Just to reinforce. Going through the bottom ones again. And then I'm going to go back to the top one, but I'm only going to go through one. Okay. So with my other needle, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm coming out of my top ones. I'm going to go to, through the bottom ones again, the bottom pico beads again, like that. Then I'm going to hop on over, go through one of my top ones. So I'm coming out in between these two middle beads and here and I'm checking my beads again they look good here is where I'm going to tie a knot because I want this really really strengthened really really strong strengthened was probably not the right word to use but I want this really really good and tight so I'm just going to tie a knot and then Nice and tight, and I just put lotion on my hands, so it's kind of hard. <clears throat> so, now I'm going to go in through those same pico beads again. Then I'm going to just make my way out of there by just following my thread path. And then I'm going to go through these three here. And I'm going to end up coming out of my 11 O's, I mean my 8 O's here again. Coming out of the middle where I'm at right now, where I tied my knot, I'm going to go through that pico bead again on this side. And then just making my way down, following my thread path. And then coming out of these eight o beads, and then we're going to sew on over to our next grouping, and that will keep our bead there. Um, that will help it to stay 
upright instead of just flipping around all over the place. Okay, so now I'm coming out of my 8-0s here, right? And we want to get to our next one. Now, if you try to go through your 11-0 your like this when you're, because you're working on this side of your bracelet, but it's hard to go through your 11-0 and your round duo on this side. You're going to have to go through it on this side. It's much easier. Go through the 11-0 that's right before the round duo, and you might have to go in at an angle, but that's okay. It's it's really easy if you do it that way. And then go through your round duo. See, this is way easier if you go through them on the top side. And then go through your 11-0. And then you can just help your thread to the back. And do the same thing on this side. And then you'll be ready to do this again on your next one. This will already be my last one. so. With that, I'll be done. So go ahead and catch up and um, we'll look at our finished piece. This is my new creation bracelet and this is how it looks. See, and this is how it looks from the side. I love how it looks from the side. And um, oh, the only thing I need to do is just add another jump ring to the side. That way I can um, attach my um, lobster claw easier but this is how it looks and it's even cute from the underside okay so a lot of steps I know well maybe not a lot of steps but you know kind of time-consuming but once you get it your your project will move around move along really fast also um, these beads that I'm using inside my halos I've had these for a while in my stash and I know that they were six millimeter, but these that I used on my practice one, these I believe are actual tr more truer to size six millimeter because they take up more space inside the halo and I actually like how that looks better. So if you use one that's small, and I know these are not five millimeter because they're a lot, they are bigger than my round duos and I know my round duos are five millimeter. So, but these fall somewhere between, uh, I guess like five and a half and there's more thread showing and there's more space in there between the bead and the halo. It doesn't look bad, but, um, I just like how it looks better when it, when you use a true to size six millimeter bead. Um, but either way, it's still going to come out really nice. So I just wanted to point that out that, that I don't think the one on this one is an actual six millimeter bead. Also, <clears throat> on my 15, on the 15 O's here that are on the side of my halo bead, these 11 O's that are here, this, these three 11 O's, I used the champagne, which matched my 15 O's, and the Toho in the middle, and then the Miyuki champagne on the other side. On this one, I used another color of 11 O, my Toho 11 O, followed by my green color of my Miyuki and I like how the different color here looks better I'm using the I think patina and see it stands out a lot nicer in this one well since I'm using champagne on champagne I mean it's still nice but I, I really like how this one looks better but this one was my first one and I was still experimenting so it's not quite as wonderful and then also on some of these, I didn't tie knots here. And then on some of them, well, like I said, I was experimenting, so it's not as nice as this one. Also, this little part on the bottom of your bracelet, it's going to keep your beads from going, from flipping around. Now, they might go a little bit to the side, but, you know, nothing. They're not going to, like, really, really be rotating and flipping around. So this underside really helps with that. So this is what we got. This is our new creation bracelet. Um, I hope you enjoyed making this, even with the time consuming part here. It's, it's, even though it's time consuming, it's easy. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you very much for watching.